this influence extends four decades. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the iconic artists behind the classic hits Summer of 69, Heaven, Straight from the Heart, Please Forgive Me, All for Love, Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman, I Finally find, Found Someone, Everything I Do, I Do It For You, and many more, Mr. Brian Adams. You might want to say a few words, sir, before we proceed to the question and answer for it portion. Grace, thank you for such a lovely introduction and good morning to everybody. Uh, in case anyone wants to know, I'm in Tokyo at the moment and I look forward to your questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, let me call on Natalie Tomada of Philippine Star. Natalie. Hello, um, good morning. Okay. Um, good morning, sir, Brian. Um, I'm Natalie from the Philippine Star. So my first question is, First off, I want to ask, how does it feel to be touring and, you know, playing to live audiences again um, in the Philippines and in this part of the world? Yeah, Asia, thank you. very excited to be playing here. Um, we played in Korea the night before last. We're in Tokyo uh, now and playing in Japan for this week. And uh, then, of course, we're coming down to see you at the end of our Asian tour. And so very, very excited to to be coming back here. And, of course, it's it's great as a musician to be playing live again after two years of not being able to do it. Uh, although we have in the last year done about a hundred shows. So since the, the pandemic sort of stopped, uh, we've been busy working. Uh, and my second question is, and you've been very productive last year, like I learned you released four albums, including the fifth year. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing your question, Natalie, you're breaking up. Uh, hello. Um, yeah, sir, um, you've been productive, very productive. Last year, you released four albums, um, including your 15th studio album. Um, what was it like? Um, and also re-recording your old hits. What was the experience like? Really? And where do, you, where do you draw your inspiration nowadays? Thank you. Thanks for the question. Yes, I, I have released four albums in the last year. And... One of them is the new album, uh, So Happy It Hurts. And that was exciting because we got nominated for a Grammy for the title song. And we uh, got busy in, in the studio. I've just been I've just been really, really busy uh, making new music and creating a, a new live show. And with all with all of the uh, the time I had on my hands uh, for two years where I couldn't work, I just wrote a lot of songs and and so really I've just been busy and to re-record the, the original songs is just to give every all the songs a, a new breath of fresh air um, because it's it's sort of opening it up to a new audience and that's what's exciting about music is you can reintroduce your music once again. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. And now the next one is Mark Bonifacio of Manila Times. Mark, are you there? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, hello, Mark. Hi, Mark from the Manila Times. So um, what can fans expect from your concert here in Manila? Well, we're going to be playing all the songs that you know and love, um, like the Philippine National Anthem, Please Forgive Me. And we'll also be playing a couple of songs from the new album. And we've got a new light show. And it's it's a whole different look to the last time we were here in, in Philippines. And for my second question, what do you love most about playing live? I was well, it's, it's something I've always done. So it's sort of it's strange not to be doing it. And I love the the idea that when you play songs live it's like playing them again for the first time because something always happens whether it be something within within the musicians or the people sing the song back to you all kinds of things happen thank you so much thank you mark thank you mark for your question um now let's hear it from bobby ricantina of manila bulletin hello brian hi this is robert from manila bulletin Hello, Robert. Hi. Hi. For my first question, um, I've been uh, in the music business for, for decades now. So what is the secret of Brian to career longevity? 
I think looking after yourself is number number one. Yes. So making sure you you keep fit and healthy, and second of all, always mm-hmm. rem- always remember where you came from. You know that you came you, where you come from is for me one of the biggest sources of inspiration. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I don't come, I don't, I come from nothing. So I've been able to work my way up to the top um, mm-hmm. in, in my field. And I'm extremely grateful for the fact that even after so many decades that we're still able to tour, record and make new music. It's, 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 it's amazing. Well, okay. From a second question, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but did you know that Philip Filipinos are so crazy about your ballads? Like everything. I do, I do know that. Heaven, yes. Um, what do you call this? When you love someone, they're so popular in the Philippines. How do you feel about it that, that they they really embrace the romantic side of uh, Brian Adams? <laughs> you know, I I love it, and and uh, it's it's very very sweet because it's it's in fact I will have to say it's unlike any other country in the world how much they love a love song there. So um, I'm excited to go and sing them all for you. Okay, okay, thank you so much, Brian. In fact, Robert, I think just talking to you again made me think yeah. that I should add a couple more songs to the set yeah. for Philippi- Philippines. Wow, nice. That's wow. nice. <laughs> That's nice to hear. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Cheers. Okay. Um, next one is Alan of uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer. Hi, Alan. Uh, hello. Hey, Good morning, Alan. Good, Good morning. morning. Yeah, so just about uh, so happy it hurts. Uh, how feel good um record in a time during the pandemic where it's you know it's, uh, some of the hard times we have experienced so uh, your your question cut out alan uh how were you able to produce such a feel good record ah like well, uh, so happy at quite, place, quite during easy. the pandemic yeah quite easy because i i was feeling that the world was going to i particularly needed to be uh writing music that was uplifting and positive And I, I was not going to let that pandemic get me down, uh, even though it was the strangest time uh, and also the most creative time I've ever had. Because during that time, I was able to put together so many music, so much music and so much new material. Um, and that's what I focused on. So, yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you appreciate the fact that it's uplifting. Yeah. And speaking of writing new material, a lot of um, artists who may be playing for decades, uh, they become content being nostalgia acts, so to speak. But you keep on churning new material. Uh, what inspires you to do that? Well, I, I think it's one of those things where you uh, you have songs in your head. And just because I've got a little bit older doesn't mean the music has stopped. So yeah. I, I keep having ideas for songs and so when i do that i just i go down put them put them down and sometimes they really good and sometimes they're not but that's just how music is <laughs> um and yeah so i think on this new album so happy it hurts i think there's a, quite a few good good songs on it all right thanks brian and uh hope to see you soon thank you alan thank you alan see you at the concert um The next one is Lian Austria of Manila Broadcasting. It's actually a radio station, Sir Brian. Okay, thank you. Hello, Lian. Good morning. Hello, Sir Brian Adams. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay. So my question would be, we all know that you have been a successful rock singer, songwriter since the 80s. But are you still willing to try other genres other than rock? Well... This is an interesting question because I have done quite a bit with other film composers. For example, I've worked with Marvin Hamlisch, Hans Zimmer, um, and Michael Kamen, of course, who I wrote with. And, and Michael Kamen and I wrote a song together with Matt Lang called Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman, which is predominantly a flamenco-based uh, song. And so the answer is yes, of course, I would be interested And uh, the other thing I can think of in the past years is that I did sing uh, with Luciano Pavarotti, uh, who's an opera singer. Um, and I remember when I did that, that I said, listen, Luciano, I don't, 
I can't sing opera. It's not my thing. He says, yeah, but come, just come and sing. And I said, okay, it could be interesting. And so I did it and had a great time. And it just shows that it doesn't matter what genre of music you sing. The fact that all singers can sing together. And, and that's, it's, it's remarkable. It's a remarkable thing. Okay, sir, thank you. For my next question is, how do you manage to maintain musical integrity while being commercially successful? I think it's really important that songwriters write their truth. And I think when you write songs, you have to, it has to come from a place of either experience or it has to have some, some, some conviction to it that uh, is truthful, that you, it actually is something that comes from inside. And so from, for me, I could never sing a song unless the song comes from somewhere that I can relate to. So I, I never sing songs that are out of my range. I never sing songs, that, the lyrics I don't believe. And so that's where it comes from. Thank you, Mr. Brian. I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, the next one is Edwin Salian of uh, Business Mirror. Edwin, Hello, you... good morning from Manila, Brian. Can you hear me? Yes, Edwin, good morning. Yes. Uh, do you still get a chance to listen to new music? Uh, are there any of the new artists that you admire that you would love to collaborate with in the future? Well, I have, I've got to be honest. I, I pretty much am living in a bubble of my own music at the moment. And... There are there are singers that I occasionally hear that I really like, and um, there are bands that I like, uh, like uh, War on Drugs and uh, Arctic Monkeys, and there are singer songwriters like Coldplay that I really like, um, and then there's young singers. There's a uh, uh, there's a couple, there's one English girl that I really like, and she comes from, from um, sort of south of England. And I think you may not have heard of her yet, but uh, her name is Cassiette, and she's really amazing. And my friend Suki Waterhouse is really great, too. Okay, thank you. Uh, for my second question, uh, what is it about the constant touring and uh, constantly making music that keeps your adrenaline and creative juices flowing well i could ask you the same question i mean what makes you want to be a journalist you have to do what what, what you follow what you feel what you feel and uh one of the things about mu music for for me is, is i always started uh, from my music from from live shows i didn't start my music from the studio so for me it's quite natural to be touring and singing live because that's what i've always done and to stop it feels kind of strange. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Edwin. Um, the next one is Jojo Panaligan of Rider PH. Thanks, Grace. Thanks, Grace. Hi, Brian. Hello, Jojo. Are those your cats? Yes. <laughs> very sweet. Thanks. Uh, when was the last time you listened to your first album, uh, Brian Adams? And what song there do you wish more people know of? And can you tell us what you love most about that time of your life? Oh, well, that that's a very long time ago. And the last time I listened to the album in its whole, I can't even remember. But I did listen to one of the songs and I re-recorded it, a song called Hiding from Love, which we put out last year. And... It's on the new classic CD, which is out, which has all of my classic songs on it. And I, 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 I you have to remember, I wrote those songs when I was 18. So right. it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting to think about what I was writing about and the, the sentiments and the lyrics at that particular time in my life, because I was writing about things that, that I could have kind of dreamt about and, mm -hmm. and, yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's always interesting. And one of the thing about making music is that it's like having a photo album of your life because I can remember each song, where I was, what I was doing, and kind of what I was thinking at the time. You know, 
And back then I didn't have anything. So I just had, I just, I just had a pocket full of songs and, and I dreamed that maybe I'd get out of the, the, the clubs and get into better, better clubs, you know, by making my own music. And it wasn't easy because those days were, were difficult days because it was literally one rejection after the other. Nobody wanted to, to back my album and nobody wanted to support it. And it just took a lot of time and finally convincing somebody to give me a shot. And from there, once I had my foot in the door, I was able to, to maximize, you know, and prove to people that I was worth signing. And luckily there was a few more songs in me too. <laughs> Do you miss the freedom that the anonymity gave you? Well, to be quite fair, I'm, I still feel I have a reasonably uh, an anonymous uh feel about me i'm not i even though i have songs that have sort of reached to all corners of the earth i i feel like i could go to any of those places and walk the streets and nobody would bother me right uh, my second question is many people are on revenge travel as the pandemic winds down is there such a thing as revenge touring for brian adams and how does it manifest i've never heard of such a thing <laughs> okay So you've always craft, you still craft your uh, concert and repertoire the way you did before the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, we started touring the moment we could. In fact, last year we started in February, and the first couple of concerts, everybody was still wearing their masks. And, and it's interesting to come back to Asia and see people still wearing masks out there because back in the West, in in Canada and in most places in Europe. People don't wear them anymore. They've given up on the idea of it. So it's, uh, it, it, but it, what I, my point is, I, I, it didn't stop us from going out there, even though many, many of our shows got canceled because of, uh, because of the protocols that were involved with, with COVID and, and government restrictions. But as we all found out, it's just a flu bug. Right. Thanks and see you in Manila, Brian. Thank you. Anong masasabi mo sa video ng ito? Tara, pag-usapan natin yan sa comment section. And also subscribe and click the notification bell para maging updated sa mga showbiz happenings.